feeding time in the morning. <laughs> These two dogs just love seeing the kookaburras each day. The kookaburra's hungry, are you? It's too early in the morning to be making that racket. Hang on, I'll get a piece. Hang on, I'll get a piece for you. Just wait a minute. Yes, I know. It's too big for you, isn't it? Here, I'll break it up. Here you go. Or even that was quite big. Here you go. It's alright, they won't come and get you. I'm very nervous of the big kookaburras behind him. on down there. Hmm? Not sure what's going on down there. Would you like some of that too? Oh no, I've got sticky fingers. There you go. Well, that's way too big for you. It's bigger than your head. Is that good? Well, you want some more, do you? All right, hang on. There you go. Goodbye. What about you? Would you like some? Come and get some before the kookaburras take it all. There you go. I'll just throw some into the garden there and they can all fly down. Get some carawongs. Got the big ibis. What are you doing? Is it too big for you? Is it you're trying to bang it? <laughs> G'day guys. Welcome back. I'm going to do a ring pour for you today, but I'm going to spin it on my cake turntable. So I've just got this from eBay. It's a good heavy weight one. I've put some foil over the top just to help keep it clean. I've got some masking tape that I've just folded into three so it's sticky on the top and sticky on the bottom. And that's going to hold my canvas in place. Just fits nicely. This is a 40 centimeter, 16 inch, and I can just feel underneath here, make sure it's even, and then I can just stick it down like so. And just being carefully so I don't knock my paint over. And um, yeah, that holds it in place. So I'm gonna do um, white, yellow, red, and black. See how that goes, hey? And I'm gonna put it into this jug. I'm probably going to use about mm, 600 grams of mixed paint, 30 ounces. I've made up more of the black in case, well, I will. I'll put it around my circle. I'll use what I want in here, then I'll thin out what's left and I'll spread it around the outside and that'll just make it spin the paint off evenly because you know when you do a ring pour and you pick up and you tilt and you go to that corner and you go to that corner and then you go to this corner and and you kind of get this I don't know weird shape but I'm going to see what happens if the uh, when the centrifugal force just pushes everything out at the same time we'll see what happens hey so we'll get to it um pouring medium is 70 percent glue 30 percent water it's thicker than what I would usually use because I want my rings to stay in shape and I want you to see them so that's that's the thicker mix um, do you want me to show you let me show you the consistency let me climb up my ladder I've had to put the ladder here today so that I can climb up otherwise you can't see <laughs> I have to have the tripod a little bit higher than normal 
All right, there we go. So the stick is about an inch from the surface. Oh, hang on. Let's try and doesn't know what to focus on. There we go. Poor little thing. It's having trouble. Doesn't know what to focus on. So that's it there. Leaves a nice mound on a mound. Pretty thick. Okay. All right, so that's it. Uh, they're all Montmartre paints. So the black and the white, I don't need to show you the bottle, it's just black and white. So the yellow is medium yellow, because they've got two yellows now. The other one is called lemon yellow, but it's a bit bright for me, what I want to do today. And this one is crimson. Um, I don't think you can buy crimson in Australia just yet. Hopefully next year they'll bring out a few more colours. I asked them to bring out some colours this year, which they have done. But um, there's still quite a few that I would like them to bring out. So maybe they'll do that next year. So what I'll do is I'm going to layer the paints and then I'm going to take the tripod down to the side there and press record and then I'll make it slow motion for you so that you can see, see my rings. <laughs> I'll zoom it in and do a bit of slow motion, okay? So stay tuned for that because that will be, that'll be exciting. That'll be worth watching. Um, since we're going to start layering, if you are new to my channel, you'll see that I do a lot of acrylic pouring. Um, I've just started doing resin. So, but acrylics, ring pours, swipes, flip cups, cloud pours, pearl pours, blooms, oh, you name it, I do it. <laughs> I'm just getting into resin. So feel free to um, subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification button. And then what you need to do, if you want to get uh, notifications, if I put up videos, you do need to go in and click the bell again, and then you get a little drop down box, and then, then you need to click um, all, otherwise you won't get all the notifications. There's my red. Now I know red and yellow are going to make orange, but it's okay. I didn't use as much black. It wasn't quite one to one. Yeah, so I did 70% paint, 30% water, and then I basically mixed them one to one, except for the black, because the black always is a little bit um, thicker. So I put 100 grams of, no, I didn't. I put 120 grams of pouring medium and 100 grams of black because as I said, I needed some extra black to go around my edges. I've started with white and then yellow because I want my center to be pale, like white and yellow, and then hopefully it gets darker and darker. Oh, we'll have rings anyway. It's not gonna be real dark. I just don't want the uh, red next to the white because, you know, I don't want pink. I might get a bit of pink anyway. I don't want the black next to the yellow because that gives that icky baby poo green colour, doesn't it? So I'm just going to keep layering until I've used up all my paints. And then hopefully, well, I should have a bit of black left over for my edges. So I'm basically putting in, you know, roughly the same amount. It's just a blob. I'm just pouring in a blob. I can't really say how much it is. I'm just pouring in a blob, trying to keep them all basically equal. I think I've got a little bit more red. My red was a little bit on the thin side. I added a splash more pouring medium, so I've got a little bit more red, a little bit more black than the others. I think I'll have enough for one more layer by the looks of it. So I'm running out of yellow. Oh, look at that. See how the rings are staying in their shape? Like you can see them. They're not all blending. That's because my mix is nice and thick. If your mix is too thin, I'll try. Mm, will I? Let me try for another layer. I don't think I will, but I never know. If I scrape it out, I might get another layer. Yeah, you can see the rings there staying in shape. If your mix is too thin, they're not going to do that. They're just going to all blend together and mix and be a bit of a mess, really. Oh. Okay, so this will be the last 
a layer. I'll just pull that on. So yeah, I do like my ring pour mix to be thicker. And my flip cup mix, that's for sure. So I'll just do this and then I will move my camera down to the side. That'll be fun, hey, fun to watch. I haven't got too much paint. I always tend to have too much paint. My story, my life story, too much paint. All right, end with black because that'll be on the outside. I'll just move that out of the way for a minute. Now, this this bit of black here I want to thin down. So, and I don't want to add water because, you know, water breaks down the paint. So I'll add some more pouring medium. And... This will be the flow extender to go around the outside of my <clears throat> big puddle that I end up doing. Still leaving a bit of a mound. I'll put some more in. I don't really want it to leave a mound. So I'll thin it out quite a lot. Because you want your flow extender. I call it a flow extender. You want it to be thin enough that your puddle is going to flow easily over it. There's no point having a background that your puddle has to kind of skip over the top of or hits the wall and then can't go over the top. You know, it's got to be nice and thin. Okay, so that's it there. It's not leaving a mound. Give it a good stir. Okay. Now I just have to clean my gloves, I've got black all over them. Rightio. Now I'm just going to move you down to the side. I'll be right back. Alright, here we go. I'm just going to support the back. So I can, and I want to go as close as I can so that my paint goes straight down and doesn't wriggle. Because if you're too high up, it kind of wriggles like that on the way down. So, you, and you lose your, your rings. So try and get down as low as you can and where we go it's kind of pouring out in more of a, a big sheet at the moment I'll get a bit closer and it'll pour out a bit nicer in a minute hopefully just really tricky when it's starting off you can't get a nice circle oh my gosh that's very dark hope it's going to be all right okay so now that I'm getting into my my circle now you can see how it's flowing out easier
So I've poured it out. It did start off a little bit wobbly and hopefully it's not going to be too blurry and I let as much go through at the end as possible because I wanted the white edge. It's really, it's always prettier on one side than it is on the other side. So we're getting a bit of grey on this side. A little bit of muddying, hopefully it won't be too bad. Righto, you're back up on the table now. Oh my gosh, you're not getting car sick, are you, from all the movement? Off the table, on the table. Now I'm going to spin. <laughs> round and round. Okay, so there we go. Love that. Let's see what happens. Like it's, it's always tricky, you know, when you're going to add black and white and yellow. It's always going to be a bit tricky. Hopefully we'll get something pretty, you know, it's, it's always going to work out better if your mix is thicker. Just look at that. Oh, that is just amazing. Amazing. That center. I'll be happy as long as I keep my center. The rest of it can go blurry. I don't mind. I just want the pretty center. I don't know why I'm trying to reach. Look, I can just do this. Here am I trying to reach over to the other corner. Silly woman. I'll make sure I don't splash paint into the center. All right, now I'm going to get my little tool, little palette knife, and just spread that over. So if I decide that, you know, I don't want to push the paint right over all the corners, um, I'll be quite happy having the four black corners. So that won't bother me in the slightest. But I will need to make sure that I've got the black paint over my edges though. I think that'll look nice, won't it? If I leave some black corners and, and push the paint over the edges. I think that would look pretty. We'll see what happens. It all depends on how much paint I've got on the surface. If I've made up too much paint, <laughs> uh, then it's all going to go over the edge. I won't have any black corners. So we'll see. I have a feeling I might have a lot of paint. But yeah, I always do. I always make up more. I do the same thing when I'm cooking. I'd rather have more food <laughs> and have leftovers than um, not enough just me hey does everyone else do that like leftovers then you don't have to cook the next night do you if you make extra that's a bonus who wants to cook every night when there's painting to be done not me get over there just pushing that paint over and then smoothing it down the sides with my little tool very handy these little palette knives a few different sizes depending on what you know how big the canvas is or what I want to do. Um, I'm even I even swipe with them. Very handy. So grab yourself a few different sizes. You can get really big ones too, which are great for covering big canvases, like if you want to do a background. Alright, that is done. Um, now, do I torch or do I not torch? I can see some bubbles in there. Um, I guess I best give it a quick torch to get those bubbles. Probably just going to turn into cells, but it doesn't matter. And the, den the different densities of your paint will give you cells, whether you want them or not. Because the, the lower density or lighter paints, they want to rise up and the the um, thicker paints, higher densities, want to sink to the bottom. All right. Oh, I love that. Please stay. Please stay. I'm going to give it a little spin first, okay? Here we go. Just to open everything up. See how easily that's all spreading out to my edges? Oh, my gosh. That's so pretty. I did want to keep my black corners though. What's going on here? What's going on here? Hmm? 
Um, I guess I didn't smooth the black out properly. <clears throat> Left it a little bit high. Oh my gosh, so pretty. I would like to keep this red and get rid of some of that. I wonder if I can actually move the weight of the paint down a bit. Not sure what's going on here. I'm just going to try and smooth that out a bit. Not sure what's happening there. I'm going to spin again and hopefully that will go down a bit. I'm going to go the other way this time. Oops, that was quite a big spin. I don't want, didn't really want to spin that much. Whoa, whoa, stop. <laughs> wow, look at that. That's so pretty. Well, there go my black edges. Never mind. Don't want to lose that red there. I like that. Just wanted to get a little bit of that black off the top there. Wow, you guys, look at that. That's so pretty. Wowzers. I mean, obviously the one side's better than the other, but you just get that with the ring pull. A little bit muddy, I guess, up here, but, well, maybe not muddy, but just blended. You can still see the lines. You know, you can still see your rings. I haven't... My mix wasn't thin enough to actually blend. I guess I could have made it even a little bit thicker. I'm just cleaning my hands here. Now I'm going to use my little tool just underneath and scrape. <clears throat> it just, what that does is it's, it reduces the weight of the paint on the side of the canvas. So it stops the paint from running, keep running over. Right, that was That was a lot of fun. Maybe my colour choices weren't the best. But how amazing would this look like in, you know, in blues, hey? Definitely going to do this again. It's just always, always a risk when you use these colours. Let me bring you down for a close-up. Oh, I love that centre. Wowzers. I guess what I could have done is after I did my ring, my um, ring pour was move the paint that way so that when I when it spun the the middle was sort of more there and then I would have got rid of more of that and kept more of this but this is how we learn hey if we want this to stay then maybe we push the center off a little bit so it doesn't have to be in the middle but how pretty is that so I think that's worked really well I turn that glary one off so I can take it down for a close-up Oh my gosh, I love that centre. Look at it, you guys. Wow. And I got the white. See, I wanted the white centre. And then it slowly blends with the yellow and then into the orange and then into the red and then into the black. So that's exactly what I wanted for the centre. Um, this here, again, not, not too bad. Struggle with the lights every day of my life. Hang on. I close the blind behind me. <laughs> Get the glare away. Look at that. So over here where it's a little bit more mm, blended, I guess. I will try that though. If I get a center that I really like, and some areas like this that I don't really like, I will try and you know just move my center off center a little bit. So that's where I've got the gray, and that's my own fault. I put the white against the black. I knew that was going to happen. But if I pick some colors, like I said, blues and turquoises, that blend really nicely together, and you aren't going to get um, other colors so much. You know your your grays. 
<clears throat> and your kind of greenish brownish color from yellow and black together but look at the lines the, the rings you see what I mean about having your mix nice and thick even though they they may not be the most attractive color up here it still adds something to the beauty of the overall pour and you can see the thickness of your mix makes such a difference in keeping your rings visible and not blending too much oh my gosh I just love that center oh it's so pretty it looks as if it's glowing doesn't it look at those those little fingerlings the points again it comes down to having your mix nice and thick so have a practice if you um, start on little pieces you know don't waste a lot of paint start on something little make your mix nice and thick and see how you go if you're not getting these defined rings it's not thick enough so thicken it up and uh, go again I love it I actually don't even mind that that gray up there it's just a, it's a different look isn't it just a contrast all right I'll shut up <laughs> and um, I put my feet up I've done two pours this morning two pours it's only 9 30 in the morning it's Saturday morning woohoo <clears throat> on a roll I do need to go and have a shower go and get some groceries get some dog food I've got a, a female poodle coming over this afternoon to use my stud dog services a very very good stud dog he knows exactly when the time is right and he'll bark at me and say yes mum we're good to go <laughs> so yeah he's amazing he's my Charlie boy little 7.8 inch teacup poodle so that's what I'm gonna be doing this afternoon I'm gonna be a bit of a gigolo <laughs> oh my gosh all right thanks for watching you guys appreciate all your love and support and um i'll see you real soon for the next one hey i'm going to keep this spinning machine going here i'll keep it out no point putting it away yet and um, i'll mix up some other colors most likely my blues we'll see unless you've got some ideas actually no you're not going to see this for another few days all right i'll see you real soon guys bye for now